Happy New Year. We all had quite the 2021, didn't we? I'm really hoping that this year is better. Uh, one thing that is happening this year is the Nintendo Switch is turning five years old. Mm-hmm, half a decade. I honestly can't believe it's been that long. That means we have all been enjoying Nintendo Switch games for the last half a decade. And I've been creating videos about the Switch for the last half a decade. It's been really interesting to watch myself, but also all these other creators bloom and explode using Nintendo Switch as their backbone. I mean, some more than others. But I, I made it my own. And I'm very proud of how we've grown on this channel, the way my content is now, what we've done with the Switch over the last five years. We've done some crazy things. And I'm just so thankful for all of those moments and all of those memories. And as corny as it is, all of the friends that I've made along the way, both you guys, but also other content creators. And that's what brought me to this video because i'm not the only content creator that covers nintendo on nintendo switch content what if i did one big mega collab where i get the top nintendo youtubers to talk about their favorite nintendo switch game every single person said yes i couldn't be more excited to work with everyone all right the first creator I'm gonna start with someone who became a really close friend to me this year specifically, but uh, we've got the chance to hang out now a couple of times, and it's very clear that we gel together very well, and that is my buddy, my clone, Bubble. Wood, you didn't, you didn't have to say all those nice things about me. You didn't have to go so thick on the paint you didn't have to go so hard on the gas with all those nice things you said about me and how great i am at mario maker mario maker is the most played game on my switch next to smash bros ultimate but i figured other people were talking about smash brothers so i'm talking about mario maker also i don't know what happened but now people think of me as the mario maker guy people come up to me at conventions and stuff and have me sign their copy of mario maker which is weird i didn't work on the game but it's also kind of awesome anyway i love mario maker because the original super mario brothers is my favorite game of all time i've played that game over and over and over and over again and super mario maker is just more of that community made levels and they're not all great levels but they're curated pretty well and it's pretty easy to figure out which ones are gonna be really good but I totally get it Mario Maker 2 is a really hard sell I feel like Nintendo really screwed up the marketing here because they made it seem like it's mostly for people who make levels I've only ever made one level in Mario Maker 2 I made like three or four in the original Mario Maker. Yeah, it's great for people who make levels, but if you don't like making levels, you are just getting a Mario game with an endless supply of levels. How is that not awesome to you? Also, it's a hard sell because if you watch like streamers or content creators play Mario Maker 2, it might look really, really hard, but that's just because they're playing expert or super expert levels. You have difficulty sliders. You can choose the difficulty of the levels that you want given to you. This new one gives you a story mode, which is just a bunch of Nintendo made levels. And if you couldn't guess, Nintendo knows how to make levels. The multiplayer is also awesome in theory. It only works about 50% of the time, but that 50% that it works, it's awesome. The other 50%, oh, it's like a slideshow. The Nintendo Switch Online just ain't it. It's definitely one of, if not my favorite game for the Nintendo Switch. I understand it's not exactly for everybody. It's just a Mario game with weird levels Nintendo never would have put in a Mario game. It feels like a ROM hack, but it's official. If you were ever on the fence about getting it because you thought, well, I'm never gonna make that many levels, you should get it. If you like Mario games, you will love this one. Anyway, thanks for having me, Wood, on your little year in review video. There's a lot of people in this video. Did anybody tell you you look great today? I can't see you at all. I feel like by this point, everyone should know who Bobby is. We've done enough videos together. Next is a overwhelmingly wholesome creator who a lot of you know, and I've gotten to know over the last year or so. And that's the wonderful 
wonderful Austin John. What's going on? I'm so happy to be a part of this video with you guys, other than the Bozo Bob Wolf who's a complete Benny, you know what I mean? Look, my favorite Nintendo Switch game of all time has to be Pokemon Sword and Shield, because it's more fun than going to the local Wawa to pick up some disco fries and a pork roll. Okay, Wood, I'm, I'm not gonna read it. I'm not gonna read the thing you wrote. When it comes to your selection of Pokemon games for the Nintendo Switch, you have a lot of options. You have Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, which is a fantastic beginner part of the series. You have Pokemon Quest, which is free to start. You have the brand new released Pokemon Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl, which is a remake of fourth generation games, very true to the original. But between Pokemon Sword and Shield and the DLC, it's actually my favorite Pokemon game of all time, beating out Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver. I know it's a little weird to say, but honestly it is. The Pokemon selection is fantastic, the story feels appropriate for Pokemon, and the region of Galar is based off of the UK and it's pretty fun to explore. Max Ray battles are a fun and at times challenging part of these games that lets you team up with friends or random strangers on the internet, always be careful with random strangers on the internet, to take down some very powerful Pokemon. The DLC brings you to a tropical region and a frozen tundra, each with its own individual quest lines, new areas to explore, new Pokemon only available in those areas, and new and fun ways to encounter legendary Pokemon. In addition, they made competitive much more approachable with the removal of some moves and reworking Pokemon available in these games. It's easier to catch competitively viable Pokemon, train them up, and optimize them. Plus, Pokemon Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl, and Pokemon Legends Arceus each have a different playstyle and a limited Pokemon selection than Pokemon Sword and Shield, so Sword and Shield is going to remain the competitive game for the time being. Until Pokemon Legends Arceus comes out in less than a month, this is definitely my favorite Pokemon game, and if you had to pick up one for the Nintendo Switch, I definitely recommend Pokemon Sword or Shield with the DLC. Back to you, Wolf. Or Bob, or who's ever next. Whoever, whoever is up on the thing. Great. Happy New Year. Any chance I can have to mess with Bob, even when I'm writing a script for another creator to create fake beef, I'm down for it. Speaking of beautiful creators, the next one, mmm, so handsome, so dashing, so charming. I'm telling you, if I wasn't taken, <laughs> let's cut to them now. I would, yeah, it's, all, it's, it's me. Also, fun fact, I burped while testing my mic and it sounded really gross. <laughs> testing, one, two, test it, one, two. Yeah, all right, kind of weird that I'm in my own video. I guess not that weird. There was just a couple games that didn't make it into the video. And even though this video is supposed to be these creators and their favorite games, not a top 10 Switch games or anything like that, it still didn't feel right not to include them. So I'm gonna really quickly do it myself. Metroid Dread released fairly recently and became an instant classic in the Nintendo Switch library. It's a sequel to Metroid Fusion that was two decades in the making, and while it only released fairly recently, it already won 2021's Game of the Year award. Obviously, a Metroidvania type game, or I guess you really could just say a Metroid type game. <laughs> I mean, these 2D Metroids are so genre-defying that they literally defined an entire genre. And I said this recently in my review of the game that you can go and watch. It's on this very channel. But it's so cool that the Metroid series created this genre of games and still in 2021 manages to release a new game in that genre and be as good if not better than all of the incredible games it has inspired over the last 20, 30 years. But yeah, there is, there's obviously so much more I can say and have said in my review, so I'll leave it there. Thanks me. If you don't know, when I stand here, my computer is right there. I do both in the same room. Ah, uh, the next creator, I am jealous of every time they upload a video because their camera quality, audio quality, and overall video quality and presentation takes a giant steamy dump on anything I ever managed to put together. Oh sh I think I did this exact same cameo for Bob like two years ago talking about the same game. Whatever, it works, it's fine. <sighs> the Switch has had an absolutely incredible library, but when I think about first party games especially, games that you can't play anywhere else that I love on the system, I gotta talk about Fire Emblem Three Houses. I have been a long time fan of the Fire Emblem series. I've been playing them since Blazing Blade first came over to the West on the GBA. I haven't missed a release since then, though I haven't necessarily finished all of them right when they came out. But the point is, 
longtime fan. And something I've always really enjoyed about the series is each new game tries to do something a little different from the ones before, whether that's adding a new mechanic, a little bit of a different spin on how the story is done, and Three Houses did this in a really big way. In fact, it's probably the most different Fire Emblem game in terms of mechanics. It keeps some of the kind of traditional formulas, plot points, gameplay stuff intact, but then throws all of it into this school setting, which I gotta be honest, when I first heard about it, I wasn't entirely sure how I would feel about it, but then actually getting my hands on and playing it, I loved every second of it. Learning a little bit from some of the stuff they did in Fire Emblem Fates, the game gave you three different houses you could join, each which had their own little storyline, some of which definitely did have some overlapping plot that was very similar, if not the same, but ultimately they still go in very different directions with pretty different endings that I really appreciate. And each one kind of give you little bits of the puzzle. You couldn't really just play one storyline and leave it at that. There was a lot of reasons to go back and play others because each one gave you just little bits more information about different things to give you the whole picture of the game's setting and plot, which was a really nice touch. Cast overall was fantastic. Like with any game with a cast this size, there were definitely characters that I liked a lot more than others, but I feel like there was a good balance of them across each and every house. And the fact that you could recruit pretty much all of them except for a couple of you know, major characters gave the ability to still have some of your favorites no matter which storyline you're doing. You know, and I gotta be honest, I really enjoyed this kind of remix on the core formula so much that I actually kind of hope they don't do it again. Uh, sometimes, you know, when a new mechanic or concept does really well, they decide to just do it all over again and start to like dig in more. But I really like the idea of this being its own specific, unique existence and stand apart from all the other games in the franchise. And it's not just the storytelling and characters that really pulled the whole thing off. I mean, that was definitely one of the big highlights for me, but the core gameplay was also excellent. Good level of difficulty, and especially on the higher challenge levels. The map designs, the redevised character system, where instead of each character having specific specific classes they're tied to, you were able to kind of freely experiment a little more. There were definitely some classes that each one excelled at more so than others. It was really just a well-developed package that I think did an excellent job of being something that maintained the kind of core pillars of what makes Fire Emblem special, but putting its own little twist on it that makes it stand apart. I'm gonna sound like a little bit of a broken record today, but everyone in this video are genuinely my friends. I mean, I love them all. Kevin, I met him at a convention in California a couple of years back, and he's just the sweetest man you'll meet. But going from the sweetest man you'll meet to the absolute swollest, buffest, <laughs> sexiest man you'll meet, uh, a man of which I am in a group chat, a fitness group chat with, helping me hit my weight gain goals. <laughs> this dude is Jack, uh, spawn wave. So we're about five years into the Switch's life, and there are a lot of incredible experiences on the system, but if I had to recommend one game that I think everyone should at least play, that's Dragon Quest XI-S. Now, this game came out originally, just Dragon Quest XI, on the PC and PS4 back in 2017. Years later, in 2020, this Dragon Quest XI-S version released, bringing a whole slew of new features. Now, the game itself, came out at a time when we're hearing more and more traditional turn-based JRPG franchises make the push towards a more action-oriented setup with its gameplay, but Dragon Quest XI came out and is as traditional a turn-based JRPG as it gets. The characters, they're diverse with pretty expansive backstories, and the new S version continues to build on that with more storylines kind of overarching that, along with the big massive story. Not necessarily breaking ground, but it's enough to keep you invested in playing through what ends up being at least a 50-hour experience just through the main storyline. You then start to talk about Endgame content, which there's quite a few even after the credits roll and all the extra side quests, you can get lost in this game for easily a hundred hours plus. The character designs come from the very talented Akira Toriyama and when it's blended with Unreal Engine 4, gives the entire game this unique but familiar look. It's kind of hard to describe. When you start playing through it, you'll understand what I mean. They also worked in this really cool thing where you can switch between 2D and 3D. Uh, the 2D is obviously a callback to the 16-bit era with the Super Nintendo and a whole massive library of RPGs there. But if you're someone who's been looking for a really good, polished, turn-based RPG, 
This is it. This is the one to pick up. And I think it works perfectly with the Switch's hybrid concept because it does lean into the idea of pick up and play sessions where maybe you want to grind out certain rare materials in the game or just play through a couple of battles in order to level up a bit there. So yes, absolutely recommend Dragon Quest XI S, especially if you're a JRPG fan. This is a must have. Okay, I have met this next creator once before. Uh, I love them. I love their content. And a lot of you do. If they weren't in this video, I feel like there would have been riots in the streets. <laughs> they once did a parody of me, of which I only half appreciated. <laughs> but I'm honored to have them finally, officially, in a video. I don't think we've done a collab before. Luigi's Mansion 3 is a game of such unusual quality. The gameplay introduced in the first game is still so solid, and it's amazing how even in a third entry, they were able to introduce so many new ideas that fit so well, they felt like they'd always been there. It's such a natural evolution of the series, and it so deliberately fixes the issues most people had with the previous game. And it's such a densely packed experience. There's always something new to interact with, always a new secret to find, always a new theme to explore. You've always got to pay attention to your surroundings, and every ghost has its own weakness you've got to figure out how to exploit. The physics are really impressive, and the designers made sure there's just endless junk to suck up and destroy. I mean, just like everything, light bulbs and books and papers, and just everything all over the place. I mean, gosh, I can, I can vacuum up stuff just for hours. This process of vacuuming and searching and solving is endlessly entertaining. The world is a giant toy box packed with puzzles, and I never get tired of exploring it. Just, just never. I mean, like, absolutely never. Just every moment of the game is just so much fun. Even at this game's least exciting points, playing it is just so satisfying. And a lot of that is thanks to the graphics as well. My gosh, this has to be the best looking game on Switch. I mean, it just has to. Visually, it's just a masterpiece. Each location is so painstakingly designed, with attention given to both visual and mechanical interest. Everything is so striking, so vibrant, and the lighting work elevates it all to ridiculous heights. I mean, the lighting, it's just, oh, mwah. I look at the game and I just can't believe it's running on Switch. And even running well. Even during gameplay, sometimes it looks like you're watching a pre-rendered cutscene. The game does have a few problems. Collecting money isn't quite as fun when you realize they're isn't really anything to do with it, and that the scoring system at the end of the game is kind of eh. And I do wish they'd done a little bit more to keep me hooked on Scarescraper, but for what it is, Luigi's Mansion 3 is, it's one of my very favorite games ever. It's one of those games that never stops feeling great to play. I, I never stop being amazed by how incredible it looks and how everything works together. I truly believe that it represents some of the best work that Nintendo is capable of. How can you not love Arlo? I'm just saying. Ant Dude and I go way back at this point. He's also super wholesome, super sweet, one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. I didn't mean that to rhyme. And his content has grown and exploded so much since I've known this man. I also really love the game he picked. So for me, when it comes to my favorite Switch games, there's obviously a lot to choose from. There are a ton of really great first party games. There's a lot of really awesome third party games out there, whether they be old ports or new games. And that's fine and dandy, but one of my favorite things about the Switch, it's the perfect indie machine. This is the best way to play so many indie games out there. So when asked to this question, the first thing that came to my mind, something a little more unconventional, but Golf Story. For those of you who haven't played this game yet, you're really missing out. If you did play the Mario Golf and tennis games on the Game Boy Color and Game Boy Advance, which had proper story modes with RPG mechanics, Golf Story takes that and just amplifies it to the nth degree. It is so absurd and amazing while still sticking to somewhat traditional golf mechanics. It's such an unforgettable experience. While you are just a guy trying to be better at golf and trying to be more impressive in the eyes of your estranged wife, along the way of getting that whole job done and trying to get all the trophies that you can, you also have to be like tossing in fish bait into the water via golf. There's one part where there are these skeletons and you have to golf eyeballs into them. There's one time where the, there's like these mole rats that are just infiltrating a golf course and you are asked to take these spy balls 
hit them next to the mole rats so the mole rats will take them, bring them underground, and you can find out where their evil lair is. This game is absolutely bonkers, and I love that it's still Switch exclusive. Incredible. I love Golf Story to death. Easily my favorite indie game on the console. Go, go play it. I mean, I, I just want to hug him. Like, you just want a big old hug every time I see him. Speaking of people that are just mm, huggable, uh, it's me again. Oh, you, you didn't have to say those nice things about me. You, di you didn't have to gas me up like that. Go... Go super ham on the bone. What was it that he said? All right, really quickly, my second game I want to interject into this video is Monster Hunter Rise. But how did nobody pick this? The Monster Hunter series has obviously been around for a long time, although apparently not long enough for me to learn how to pronounce it. Hunter. I'll never get that. And yet, a brand new release here in 2021 showed us a whole new side of the series, introducing new mechanics that made the gameplay better than ever before. I've said this again in my review, and I did a full review of that game you can go and watch on this channel. But I've never been a huge fan of the Monster Hunter series. The gameplay was slow and chunky for me, and I, I really struggled to get engrossed. However, the simple addition of wire bugs and just actually taking the time to learn the game a little better than I had previously inspired a whole new love for the franchise in me. I would say Monster Hunter Rise is easily the game I've spent the most amount of time on this year. And if you haven't been paying attention, this Monster Hunter Sunbreak DLC that's releasing, it is going to be a huge expansion, essentially doubling the content in the game. And I'm very excited to see more of that. All right. Cool. This video is really fun, huh? So many people. Now, for someone who, if I didn't invite them, they would have just been mad at me. So they're here out of pity. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, Sean or RGT and I have been friends longer than anyone else in this video and I have been friends. Fun fact. RGT was a fan of mine at one point, if you can believe it. He won't tell you now, but back when I had like 5,000 subs and we first started talking when he was like 500 subs, uh, yeah, he was a fan of beat-em-ups. Since then, we've become very close and we have helped each other grow a lot. So what is my favorite Nintendo Switch game? I've had a lot of games and I'm like, I really like this game. I think this game is going to be my new favorite, but there's one game that I always go back to. It might take a day, it might take a week, it might take a month, but I always go back to it because, well, it's truly my favorite Nintendo Switch game, and that game is Super Mario Odyssey. Now, I feel like some of the reason I really love Super Mario Odyssey is because it just reminds me a lot of Super Mario 64. To me, that was one of the most impactful gaming memories that I ever had, just sitting there in bewilderment looking at this 3D universe, and of course, there were other 3D Mario games before Super Mario Odyssey with things like Super Mario Sunshine and the Galaxy games, and they were great games. Maybe not so much Super Mario Sunshine, but the Galaxy games are great, but they never gave me that same sort of feeling, that same sort of amazement and wow factor that Super Mario 64 and now Super Mario Odyssey gave me. Like, a big dinosaur. That's not Yoshi. Like, that's cool. A big Tyrannosaurus Rex just wrecking through levels and wrecking through different areas as you find him throughout the game. New Donk City. It's the most brilliant Mario level ever, in my opinion, because it's so simple, yet it works works so well because you never expect Mario to be in a real world situation. He's always within the Mushroom Kingdom or the different kingdoms that are in the game, but he's never really been in the real world. And this has actual people walking around and taxi cabs going on. And then you have this little fat Italian weirdo running around with a little mustache and his hat. I have a mustache and a hat and I'm a fat Italian weirdo. But anyways, I love collecting all the moons because I haven't collected all the moons yet. And just playing around in the game, I don't want to look at tutorials and stuff like that. I want to explore and experience them for myself. I always feel like I'm discovering something new or learning something new or finding a moon. And it's like, oh, that's what I had to do with this. Great soundtrack, great visuals, but really, it's just a fantastic game. Definitely by far my favorite Mario game and really my favorite Nintendo Switch game to date. And no, it's not because I kind of look like Mario. Stop it. Yahoo! Stupid dumb Sean. All right, next, Miss Click. I and Kim adore Miss Click. She is super sweet. She is a massive fan of Kim's. 
which I find so wholesome. And she doesn't really make videos. She streams on Twitch very well. She's one of my inspirations when it comes to streaming and wanting to better the way I stream. In fact, Miss Click is such a streamer that she forgot to turn off her Twitch assets to record the video. She is the only Nintendo ambassador in the video. Would have been two of us, but we, we know what, what happened there. Hey, it's my turn. Uh, I do want to be quick with this because I know I can rant on forever about things. Thanks for having me part of this video, Wood. And I hope you guys are enjoying all the other suggestions that my beautiful friends have been bringing to the table about their favorite Switch games. I know what you are probably going to think, and you're going to think that I'm going to say something like Zelda. But to be honest, as much as Zelda is one of, if not my favorite game on the Switch, I do think when it comes to the Switch itself, I had to include the game that I have the most hours in in total. And and if you know, you know, and if you don't, you're about to find out, but that is definitely Splatoon 2. Your girl is like close to 2,000 hours, I think, in this game, and I do not regret a single second. Splatoon 2 has a great story, a great setup, some of the best DLC, I think, out of almost any game I have played. I love Octo Expansion. Highly recommend that when you check out Splatoon 2, if you get a chance to, you also check out the Octo Expansion DLC. Totally, absolutely worth the money. Splatoon 2 has a set of characters and cast that enthrall you. The whole atmosphere of the world they live in is something so unique and different. You know, it might look like a kid's game. It might be super colorful, but to be honest, it's not as it appears. And though the vibrancy and the colorfulness and the playfulness of the game appears one way, the game actually has one of the best backbones for not just storyline and mechanics, but also the competitive aspect. I will say Splatoon 2 is one of the most seamless online experiences when it comes to Nintendo Switch Online. I feel like that's not saying much, but also it's saying a lot. So if you like seamless 60 frames per second, fluid gameplay, the gyro controls are some among of the best out of the entire Switch library. Listen, if you're willing to try something new, Splatoon 2 really does well at bringing something new and something fresh to the shooter genre as a whole. I could talk forever, but I won't. Thank you for having me, Wood. Love you guys so much. I hope you enjoy all these other games that my beloved friends have brought up. Happy New Year, my friends. Happy five year switch. I'll see you guys in the next one. Stay awesome, stay beautiful, and stay savage. Ta ta. Bye, Miss Click. I love you. You're not me. No. What are you doing here? I'm talking to my friend. Oh, okay. Well, why are you here? Oh. Do you want to do um, Animal Crossing? Yeah. Okay. What is there to say about Animal Crossing that we haven't already said? I know we've done a couple videos about Animal Crossing on Wood's channel, and I've done several on mine, but I just feel like it was important to include it on the list because I feel like it got a lot of us through the beginning of the pandemic. You cannot deny that it was perfect timing for that game to come out. There definitely was a point where I slowed down playing the game for a while, but now that the updates come out and the happy- Oh, what is it called? Happy Island Designer? Is it? Oh, is it? Oh, okay. Yeah, I think you're right. I've been playing it a lot again. And honestly, I kind of like it better now than when I first started playing it because now there's items that I can actually use to make my island look how I wanted it to look in the first place. If you've never played the game and you've ever thought to yourself, I really want a chicken knight to be my neighbor. I'd really like to be in debt to a raccoon. If you'd like to collect wiggly little gyroids that you kind of wish were real and were in your own house. This was also Wood's first Animal Crossing game, so that was fun for me explaining how things work. So now I'm the expert and he has to listen to me. That's fun. I like that. That's my favorite. That's what you think, huh? Yeah. Okay. How do I wrap this up? All right. That was beautiful. <laughs> do you want to introduce the next person? Who's next? Peebs. We know him. Yeah. We like him. You want to say... Hit it, peeps. Okay, go. <laughs> I've been a big fan of Zelda since I was a kid. In fact, I even did a video on uh, this channel with Wood on Zelda. Huh? Go check it out. There's a little there's a little plug for you, Wood. I got your back. So when Breath of the Wild came out on the Switch, I was obviously really, really excited. I was even lucky enough to get an early copy. I was having tons of fun with it, but uh, once I made my video and, you know, the kind of hype wore down, uh, I started to wonder, like, mm -hmm. <laughs> The more I thought about it, the more I wondered, do I even really like 
this game that much. So I kind of got a little bit uh, down on Breath of the Wild for a while. Yeah. Kind of like, you know, all the, all the talking points that you hear sometimes. The dungeons aren't that good. I actually do still think that. I'm, I'm just saying. Especially right after uh, Skyward Sword and Twilight Princess, which had some of the better dungeons in the entire series, I think. I'm just, I'm getting a little off track here, but you know, you don't have your typical Zelda items. There's no hook shot. The music isn't quite as catchy. Like, I mean, the there's some there's some good songs in Breath of the Wild, of course. But I guess I just kind of got used to the way the music was in the previous games. Like, you know, you get to Dragoon Roost Island and it's like... You know, like that. There was a bunch of changes, basically, that made it different and made it stand out from the previous Zelda games, which I grew up playing. But recently, uh, last November, actually, I decided to give the game another try and kind of go in without those sort of, like, old-school Zelda gamer expectations and just kind of appreciating the game for what it is. And I'm so glad that I did because I had so much fun with it. Once I dropped all my preconceived notions of what a Zelda game is or should be, I, I really changed my opinion. I think it actually is my favorite Switch game now. It really is a pretty crazy like 180 that I had with it. I feel like everybody knows what makes Breath of the Wild great. There's so many cool weapons that you can get. There's even some like funny ones like the hammer that you get from like that creepy monster guy. It doesn't do very much damage but when you hit someone with it they just go flying. Well not all the side quests are you know like as interesting as aliens coming down and like abducting cows or whatever. Pretty fun for the most part and there is a lot of them too. There's no tingle unfortunately. I really kind of wish they had I just want to see what, they, what, what a Breath of the Wild iteration of Tingle would be. But there is a lot of different uh, weird characters in the game if you uh, delve deep enough into it. There's even like a girl who's sexually attracted to like a ball. Oh, and, and she's also attracted to uh, uh, guardians. She really likes those. I found a, I killed a guardian and got an ancient rod. I wonder if, I wonder if she would, if she would want that. But anyway, I'm glad that I gave it another chance because it's it's just so much fun and there's so much there. Like I played the game for forever to make an entire video on it. I beat the entire game and did tons of side quests and, and things. And I still feel like there's lots of stuff I haven't done yet that I want to go back and start playing again. You get freaking stoked for Breath of the Wild 2. I really want to play Breath of the Wild 2. Oh yeah, I, I think I'm done now though. I don't know. Breath of the Wild is fun. No one on the internet has said that before. I don't think anyone can find a flaw in Peanut Butter Gamer. We've become friends very recently. It's one of them things where we just clicked. Our personalities are very similar. I already feel like we're friends and I've barely known him six months. You know, I, I talk a lot in this video about how much of an honor it is to work with all these creators in this big collab and have them all in here. But if you want to talk about honor, I mean, I couldn't have asked for a better wife. You know, a whole different honor, a whole better honor to work with Kim in my content. I mean, Kim has grown into a creator of her own with her own channel, but she brings so much to this channel. I love that she's so invested in it, that we can create things together. And it's some of the most fun I have on the channel is making videos with my wife. I don't know how I got so lucky. I don't even know how this worked out and this happened, but I'm honestly so thankful. I won't say who it is. I'll let it be a surprise for when the clip starts. But I just want you to know that I watched their content before I had a channel. And to now be working with them all these years later is staggering. This creator is OG YouTube. A lot of what I create now, the backbone of that was built by him. And they still create quality content to this day. They're an inspiration to any creator. Also, not really a Nintendo Switch channel, but don't care. Hey there, numb nuts. It's me, the angry video game nerd. Now, usually I'd be sitting here telling you about the latest games that I've forced myself to play for your enjoyment. But today is a little different because I'm gonna tell you about a game I actually like. Yeah, weird. But if that's what you want this time, that's what you're gonna get. So what is my favorite Nintendo Switch game? Well, it's an epic fantasy that lets you travel to many different looking lands, collecting different weapons and doing battles with all kinds of monsters. It was also on the Wii U. And my only complaint is that it's too hard. And you gotta defeat the final boss three times? Who came up with that? Well, with that said, it's my favorite. And you guessed it, it is Angry Video Game Nerd 1 and 2 Deluxe. Oh wait, you thought I meant Zelda Breath of the Wild? 
Actually, yeah, that is my favorite. But how could you not pick a game starring me? It's the ultimate nerd experience. When it comes to Switch games, come on, this is where it's at. I mean, who wouldn't want to play a game where I fight characters that have appeared in my episodes? Satan, Jekyll and Hyde, even Fred Fox. Best game ever, hands down. That's right, I'm plugging this shit just like I'm plugging the damn bathtub drain. You can buy it right now, digitally, and also physically for Switch and PlayStation in a few months. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> James, I want to say thank you so much for taking the time to do that for me. You have no idea how much it means to me. Kim and I met James once, and he is also a super nice guy. And the idea of doing his own game for the video <laughs> was mine. But if I had a game on Switch, that would be my favorite game on Switch. Next! I mean, you can't talk about inspirations and not look at this very, very sweet person. I am so insanely proud of everything they're accomplishing. It's crazy to me that Nintendo Switch launched in 2017 and didn't get its first game until 2020. Clubhouse Games 51 Worldwide classics. I call it a masterpiece, others call it Clubhouse Games. One of the coolest things about Nintendo during the Switch era is their ability to bring back dead franchises without even flinching, acting like nothing ever happened. Uh, most notably that happened with Metroid Dread recently, but also with Big Brain Academy Brain vs. Brain. And while Clubhouse Games 51 Worldwide Classics felt like an excuse for Nintendo to make a Wii-style minigame collection without calling it a Wii-style minigame collection, rather than making a flat-out sequel to the DS game, I don't care, I miss these kind of games. Clubhouse Games has some of the most simple fun a Clubhouse Games owner could ask for. The visuals are so crisp and the sounds are so satisfying. Just hearing a marble being placed on the table or a flip of the card, the presentation is just so good! And then the sheer amount of games means you're bound to like something in the package, with nearly everything being available via online multiplayer as well. It may not be a perfect game, or it isn't, I'm just being coy. I really like Clubhouse Games 51 Worldwide Classics. It's such a fun pick up and play game for the Switch and it works incredibly well as such. It's so instant just jumping in and picking a game to play. There's so much content there and while most of the games aren't crazy in depth, there's definitely enough modes and enough variations of each game to keep you playing. You know, so many of these games have been around for decades, hundreds of years really, that why would you get bored of them in Clubhouse Games 51 Worldwide Classics? It's Clubhouse Games 51 Worldwide Classics. You always wonder, is this person who they are outside their videos? And I think to some degree, everyone is different. But Scott is very much Scott. He's just making videos because he loves to make videos. There's nothing else to it. He just loves creating content and loves video games. That's his whole thing. He's just a nice person. All right, now for me one more time. There's a lot still that didn't make it in the video. So let's do a couple special mentions. I loved Hades. Bowser's Fury was a fantastic surprise. Nobody picked Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, and I know it was a Wii U game, but it's still the best-selling Switch game and one of the best-selling games of all time and deserves its credit. Mario Party Superstars is probably one of, if not my favorite, Mario Party. And a lot of people had Astral Chain in their backups. And I think that says a lot about the game. And I thoroughly enjoyed that one. But the final game for this video, which makes too much sense for the kind of video that it is. And I would say that other than Breath of the Wild, this probably would be my number one. And that's Smash Ultimate. I mean, everyone is here in my video. How could I not talk about the game? where everyone is here. Look, you know what it is, it's Smash. There's not much more I can add to it. We recently had the final character join the roster in Sora, which actually invigorated my love back in the series. And it's weird because I'm not a huge, I love Kingdom Hearts, but I'm not a massive fan, but I love the way Sora plays and it got me back into the game competitively. I even had like a two hour stream with Bob on Twitch the other day where he was kicking my butt up and down the entire stream because that man is way too good at Captain Falcon. But Smash scratches a weird itch. Doesn't it? I mean, you can pop that game in any time and just blast out a few rounds of Smash and feel content. I love Smash, and it encapsulates essentially what this video was also trying to encapsulate. Bringing together all the Nintendo IPs and even just video games in a big celebration of all things gaming. And this video is a big celebration of all things Switch and the creators 
that have shown passion and love for the console over the last five years. So you can easily see this video as the top 10 or a five year celebration of the console or just me gassing up a bunch of my friends and other content creators. However you see it, I just want to thank you for watching my content all of these years and getting me to the point where I can make a really awesome video like this where everyone wants to be included. The journey over the last five years with the Switch and with my channel has been mind-blowing and it's changed my life and it's changed me. And now to be surrounded by all these wonderful people and all of you doing what I love and having fun with it. There was a point in my life where I thought there was no fixing anything. Where I thought that that was going to be my life for the rest of my life. And now I have everything I could ever want. And I couldn't have done any of it without all of your help and support. I have no idea what the next five years will look like. I don't, think, I don't think it matters. If this train ever falls off the rails, I will be thankful for every single moment I had along the way. If it keeps chugging along, then I'll keep pumping out videos. <laughs> but just know that I will always be thankful for everything.